We're discussing the soon-to-be plastics ban in December 2022, and joining me is Peter Sean Taylor. Peter, uh, as I mentioned before, Canadians don't mind going without. They don't mind cutting back or, or paying even an extra tax if they know that that's going to help a situation. In this case, they're okay maybe with a single plastics use ban if it will mean less garbage in the ocean or less plastic waste and less plastic at the landfill and, and, and whatnot. Does this ban help in that effort to reduce plastic uh, garbage, especially in the ocean? Absolutely not. Um, and, 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 you know, Canadians that are concerned about uh, plastic waste, which is a, a fine thing to be concerned about, and uh, they're um, shocked by the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, um, I would say you can rest easy. Um, lots of evidence uh, points to the fact that the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is uh, almost entirely produced by uh, fishing waste, waste from the fishing industry, mainly the Asian fishing industry. Um, in my uh, article, I cited a peer-reviewed article in Nature uh, on the subject that never once mentions Canada, um, mentions the five countries that are mostly to blame, and Canada isn't there. Um, another researcher I talked to, uh, you know, tr calculated how much of the of ocean plastic ocean waste that Canada contributes, it's it's a fractions of a hundredth of a percentage. Uh, it's really really small. Um, so there's not a big concern that uh, Canadian plastic waste is going into the ocean. Um, Canada of the 3.2 million tons of of plastic waste generated in Canada annually, less than one percent of it is unaccounted for. Almost all of it is landfilled recycled, burned for energy, um, less than 1% ends up as garbage. Um, so that's small. You, you, and I cite, um, you know, shoreline cleanup studies where these six items, they're not the big items. They're, they're, they're eighth and ninth on the list, um, you know. Um, and then uh, you can also look at uh, terrestrial garbage, land, land, you know, litter. Uh, City of Toronto does a very useful um, survey of litter on random plots of land uh, throughout the city. Again, these six items um, don't show up as, as major contributors. You'd think if these were the six things we decided to ban, they would be one, two, three, four, five, six on the list. They're not. Oh, wow. um, sometimes they're way down the list, 10th or, or lower. Um, so that it's not a big... Uh, these plastic items are not a big contributor uh, to garbage. What I, I think it is, um, if I had to come up with a reason, is that they're derived from the oil and gas industry, and therefore they're they're evil in in this other way, right? Well, that's they what are. I was going to ask you. I'm like, if yeah. we if Canada is not among the world's top pollu polluters, then what is the impetus to make this dramatic move to banning this single use plastic? Exactly. Well, you talk to Greenpeace and other folks, and they say, you know, big plastic and big fossil fuel, you know, big oil, uh, they're sort of the same. Uh, one, one researcher I talked to called, uh, you know, plastic sort of um, fossil fuels made solid, right? So they bring with it all the um, uh, evil associations, I guess, that, that some activists have with, with fossil fuels. So um, that may explain... Um, this, this animosity that we're seeing that really defies the evidence. You know, you, you point to all the evidence, even the, the federal government's own cost benefit analysis mm -hmm. of this particular policy. So you add up all the benefits and then you add up all the costs. The, the, according to the federal government's own calculations, the costs are 1.9 billion. The benefits are 600 million. The net wow. um, result is, is costs of 1.3 billion. So Based on standard cost-benefit analysis, you would not go forward with this with this policy because its costs are larger than its benefits. But still, they went ahead. Um, it is driven by belief, I think, rather than facts and evidence. Okay, we only have thirty seconds left before before we have to go. How is this mm -hmm. going to impact Canadian plastic manufacturers? Oh, it's going to annihilate them. Um, uh, the one guy I talked to in my story, forty percent of his business was making grocery store bags. Uh, he says he's just going to have to trash a whole bunch of his equipment because no one's going to buy it anymore. Uh, so we're exporting jobs overseas with this because all the paper bags and the woven fabric bags that are now the requirements, uh, they're all made overseas in China and Vietnam. So that's where all the action is going to be for now on. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Peter. You've really highlighted a lot of concerns we have, and not just convenience concerns, but also with jobs and manufacturing. Thank you so much for coming on today to share your insights. Pleasure always. Take care. Yep.
There are so many factors to consider when implementing a policy like this. And of course, Canadians, we want to be more environmental. We want to reduce plastic waste and plastic uh, litter and pollution, especially in our oceans. But did we get this right? I'm not sure about that. For CounterPoint, I'm Tanya Granik-Allen.